7.1, we're uh, going to do chapter 7. This is uh, dealing with nth roots and radicals now. Um, this is dealing with powers, roots, and radicals, kind of like what we talked about in chapter 6 um, with all the, the rules and the powers and everything, except now we're going to have some um, radicals and rationals and fractions in there as well. So the nth root of a, um, basically we have the nth root of a, which basically states that we can have more than just the square root. We can have the cube root, the fifth root, the tenth root, the hundredth root. Um, you can have now many, many roots is the point. So this is just an example. The cube root of 8 is all. Um, this is something that I wanted to get through to you guys before we started, um, was that um, the square root, um, we normally don't write a little 2 there but they do mean the same thing. This is a square root. People just don't normally write a squared there. That's all. So when you see an item like this, we never really write the squared root, but that's really what it means. The square root of 5 really means the second root of 5 is really what that means. So just want to keep that in mind when you're doing this. Um, so to look at these properties in different ways that we can rewrite this, the nth root of a, uh, you can rewrite as a to the 1 over m. That's really all it is. Okay, you're rewriting it as a fraction, and whatever that number is, um, is the base, the denominator of that fraction. That's really all it is. If a is greater than zero and even, then you have two answers. So the point we're getting at here is, if n is an even number, that's the key here. You're going to get two answers. Remember with square roots, square roots you had two answers, like plus or minus. Well, it's the same with the 4th root, the 6th root, the 8th root, the 10th root, the 12th root. Anything that's even, you're going to get a plus or minus with. So I want you to keep that in mind as well. Um, if for some reason a equals 0 and it's even, then you're just going to get 0 as an answer. That's something else I want you to keep in mind there. Um, however, if a is less than 0, you are going to end up getting uh, imaginary uh, solutions which is what you already know, right? If we had a negative underneath the square root, what do we end up with? We ended up with i's. We talked about that in chapter 5, right? Negatives were dealing with um, imaginary numbers underneath square roots. So taking a look here at example 1, all right, we know how to rewrite them now. Um, if I told you that n equals 3 and a is negative 125, uh, basically what we're saying is, can you think of a number? Um, that when you multiply it three straight times um, will give you negative 125 and it has to be the same number so you got to keep that in mind um, since n is odd there is only one answer right if it was a square root or the fourth root that'd be different we'd have plus or minus but because it's cube root there's only one answer there's only one thing that works in this problem so you got to think of what number three times that's exactly the same will give you negative 125 and just so you can get some practice rewriting that, this is negative 125 to the one-third power. And the answer is negative 5. Um, 4 and 16, if we take that and plug that in, now because that is a 4, um, that's even, which means there will be two answers, a plus or minus. Um, so you can take a look at that and rewrite it if you wanted to uh, as 16 to the one-fourth power. But 16 to the one-fourth power, um, you can plug that in on the calculator. You might not be able to plug in the fourth root um, on a calculator, but what you can always do is you can type in 16 with a little caret sign, right? And that caret sign is right underneath the clear. You can type in 16 with a caret sign, and then parentheses, 1 divided by 4, and parentheses, enter, and you should get a 2. But your calculator will only show up as a positive 2. You need to remember that because it is the even root, that you get a plus and a minus as your answer. So you need to remember that. Rational exponents, if you have m over n, there's different ways that we can piece this together. Um, if you remember when you have multiplication with uh, rational, um, when you have multiplication with exponents in general, um, is when you have things with parentheses. So the point is, when you have the parentheses here, that means you multiply them, correct? Well, 1 over n to the m, um, when you multiply them, you will get m over m. Well, once again, no problem. Um, but sometimes when you have a problem like this, and you stretch it out like that, we can rewrite 1 over n as the nth root of a, right? Because we're kind of looking backwards. We said that the nth root of a equals 1 over n. Well, guess what? It's the same. Um, 
you can look at it backwards if I give you 1 over n you can switch it back into a root so it's that to the m power you can also rewrite it as m on the inside and 1 over n on the outside because once again it's multiplication and multiplication is interchangeable so if I wanted to I could have the exponent on the inside and the fraction uh, fractional exponent on the outside which means a to the m is on the inside and the nth root is on the outside. Um, two, the only trick with two is you can't have a negative exponent if you remember that from chapter six. So basically what that means is it's actually one over a um, m over n. And we already did all the work here um, for a to the m over n. So really it's just one over the nth root of a to the m or it's one over the nth root of a to the m. Either way you're still going to get the same answer. So just keeping that in mind. So quickly here, taking a look at example two, uh, sometimes there is quicker and easier solutions and easier ways to solve problems. Um, if I was looking at this, there's two ways. I could do nine cubed to the one half. Well, not a problem, except nine cubed, can you do that in your head? No. Nine cubed is a little harder to do because then I can take the square root of that. So really what I'm saying is 9 cubed is 729. Find the square root of 729 for me. Well, it's 27. How many of you knew that off the top of your head? Not many, correct? The point is, this is why rewriting them can be very crucial and important and sometimes be easier to help you solve the problems in your head. If we would have rewritten this problem as 9 to the 1 half to the third, 1 half is the same as saying the square root. So really it's saying the square root of 9 to the third. Well, the square root of 9 is 3. So really I'm saying 3 to the third, which is like saying 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. All of which can be done in your head. If I said 32 to the negative 2 fifths, well, since it's negative, you know I have to write that on the bottom. But if I did this, I would put the fifth root on the inside. And the reason I would put the fifth root on the inside and the 2 on the outside is the fifth root of 32 is 2. That's how I got this 2 right here. The fifth root of 32 is 2, so this is really 2 squared, and 2 squared is 4. Just making the problem much simpler to solve as 1 fourth. If I did it the other way, 32 squared, how many of you know that in your head? How many of you knew that that was 1,024? Not many of you. And then how many of you on top of that would know that the fifth root of 1,024 was 4? Not many. So the point is, this method up here would have been simpler, but they're each interchangeable. You could either do 3 to the 1 half or 1 half to the third. You could either do 2 to the 1 fifth or 1 fifth squared. Either one will give you the same answer. And when we come back here, we will continue on with example 4.